Okay, next up is the flywheel. Uh, I'm not going to do a great deal to this. It's actually in, in pretty good condition. There's no real lip here. In fact, the clutch that came out looked pretty good. So I suspect this was replaced fairly recently. Um, so we're just going to give it a clean with some brake and clutch cleaner and then uh, box it up so it's safe, ready to go back on the car as and when we've got the automatic gearbox taken off. Always useful to keep old boxes. This is a set of uh, discs from the old XC90 and the box, pretty perfect for storing the flywheel. So before I can put the uh, clutch master cylinder back in, got to get rid of this little blanking plate that appears to be sealed in. So uh, I think a bit of brute force is necessary. Nothing like a big bar and a hammer. We have daylight. Result. So brute force was the ticket. Uh, it looks like it's not sealant, but actually a sort of dense foam sticky gasket. So we might actually be able to reuse that, which is kind of handy. So back into the car, and after a minor camera fail and a new stand selected, uh, time to get the centre console back in. So there's a lot of faffing here. You've got to get the wiring loom through the plastic and through all the mounting, uh, push the cables through the bulkhead, uh, line everything up, and then move the cables to the hole they're meant to go through. Once all that's in, time to kind of get the carpets back in place, put the piece of plastic that stop the carpets flapping around, uh, and then over to the passenger side and get the bulkhead screws back in for where the cables pass through and then try and screw it all into place. This is a little bit difficult. It's quite a reach under the dashboard, but if you stick your head under, you then can't see what you're doing. A small interlude there to go and grab the tools required because I hadn't actually got the toolbox out at this point. And then uh, tighten everything up. I made a point uh, before the video of cleaning underneath the carpets and all the areas that would be difficult to reach before the centre console goes back in because they were a bit grim and I don't want that staying in the car. Right, first stage done. Gear stick is back in. Wiring is roughly in the right place. Uh, we're all through the bulkhead and carpet back down. And the most important bit, we have gear linkages. So with that done, it's just a case of putting the centre console back in, which is quite a fiddly job. So there's lots of turn and froing, just making sure none of the wires are trapped or are going to rub on anything uh, when it all goes back together. Uh, and then slowly screw the thousands of little torque screws back in everywhere and get all the switches and, uh, and bits and pieces plugged back in. So the last bit under here, before the clutch master goes in, is this little clutch adjuster spring mechanism. So I believe if I push the pedal back, we should be able to get this in. Ah, there it is. That's it, so the clutch is on the floor. Ow! And then smacks you in the face. Well, nursing a possible black eye, I thought I'd go on to some softer jobs. So, uh, centre armrest back in and some of the trim under the dashboard. Now we're back to the gearbox. So, we're under the bonnet again, uh, taking some ancillary bits off so that we can get better access to the gearbox bolts. A whole set of 14mm bolts all the way around, uh, 15 I think in total. Um, some a little bit easier to access than others. Some a real ball ache to get to, to be quite frank. Uh, so start whipping the few out at the top uh, and then it'll be underneath to start whipping the lower ones out. Right, we have one really very stubborn bolt. Fortunately, we've got steel and aluminium together here, so I suspect some galvanic corrosion. Yep. Oh. So all the gearbox bolts here are a 14 mil, and there is one really inaccessible one. I wonder if I can get it to focus on it. Right down there, which is nothing short of a pain in the proverbial. Um, last time we had to get the engine mount, which is that bit there, out of the way, and we had to get all the fan pack out and everything to get to it. However, a bit of hunting in my toolbox, and we have found a beautiful tool. This is a 14mm flex head ratchet spanner that's 
potentially seeing better days. Um, I'm hoping that will allow me access to that god-awful bolt without having to take loads of other stuff off. So let's find out. And that right there, my friends, is a winner. Well, it worked. That's a good half hour's worth of my life. I'll never get back, just getting that one bolt out. Uh, I had to use the 15 mil as a bit of extra leverage, but luckily the uh, ratchet held out. So one last job in the sun, I thought I would get the car up in the air because we're going to need to get under the front of the car to get the drive shaft out. So while I was at it, I thought I'd take the opportunity to swap the wheels over, mainly because the other wheels were a little bit flat, so it, the car was impossible to move. So with some actual round tyres, it might roll slightly. Right, old wheels are off, you know what they say. Only flat on the bottom, right? Jeepers. They're off to a new home, my brother's having those as spares for his V70. And, perfos are on. They're only on there temporarily in reality because we've got to take the drive shafts off the front, but it just needs to car up a bit uh, and get them out of the way. And then almost straight away, they're back off again. So. We're getting access here to the hub so we can get the drive shaft out. So there's two bolts on the upright and then it's the anti-roll bar and the whole lot moves out of the way. And a couple of bolts at the top and we'll get the whole strut out before we remove the drive shaft. Uh, unfortunately, you can see the weather has broken so I've donned the all important flat cap to keep me dry. As if by magic, ta-da, strut is out. So here's the driver's side shaft half out. So it's already out of the hub. I just need to disconnect the bearing under there and then pop it out of the gearbox. Looks like it's had some remedial work fairly recently. That looks like quite a new ABS ring and a reasonably good looking boot on there, but the innards are not looking great. Neither is that brake line. So there's a few other bits we might do before this all goes back together properly. And huh, you can see where bigger wheels have been eating into the arch too. Uh, so much for working on the car. It was dry a minute ago. Now we have hail, rain and thunder. So, Great post-apocalyptic rain update. Uh, we're now starting to lower the subframe, which is this section here. So you can see it's sitting on jacks here. So what I'll be able to do is slowly lower it down. Uh, the bolts are out front and back. Um, and there's a brace across the engine. So we're gonna hold the engine in place and then slowly lower the subframe and the gearbox hopefully with it. So you can see now the gearbox is separated, but Let's not make you dizzy. You can see there's not a lot of clearance to get that out from under here. Um, it's a little bit tight in here. So again, another jack over there, and there's another one you can't really see, just tied it in there. Um, so once we've got everything disconnected from the subframe, so there's a couple of bits at the back disconnected from the steering and another engine mount at the far side and about this location, then we should be able to drop the whole lot and gearbox should come out. So, um, if it doesn't rain like crazy again, we might actually get it done today. So here we are, only about three hours of uh, fighting with it and a couple of rain showers and uh, the gearbox is out. As you can see, the subframe is, is only, only just down a little bit, yeah? Yeah. Basically, it was subframe off to get the gearbox out and then a wrestle with it to get it out, <laughs> as you can see from its hiding hole. Now all I've got to do is figure out how the bloody hell I get that off. Well, this is the offending article. It actually failed on us towing a car back from Goodwood, so am I glad to see the back of that hunk of junk? So, we have had some success getting the torque converter off. Uh, apparently, you're supposed to have taken these out before taking the gearbox off. Uh, they come through from the back of the flywheel into the torque converter. Um, but once you take the starter motor off, you can access these individually with about three, four foot worth of extension and an impact gun. Little bit of heat and they did eventually shift. Drops the torque converter off and then onto these, which look more odd than they actually are, just a standard 18 mil socket, but a 16 sided rather than an eight sided impact. And they're off. Galled the flywheel a little bit, but that doesn't matter because that flywheel isn't going back on. We're putting the one on from the manual gearbox. So finally, everything from the auto is off. Time to start putting the manual gearbox back in. So now I get the joy of watching me trying to fit the flywheel without going in through the wheel arch. Thus, you would see nothing but my backside. Uh, so lots of hanging over the bonnet and eventually I managed to get it located enough and securely enough so that I could put the first couple of bolts in. Uh, and then it was a case of talking them around in, a, in the usual fashion just to make sure that it doesn't warp the flywheel. 
and using the obligatory dugga dugga gun. So we have some nice fancy bits. This is a new Saks clutch OEM Volvo 850R item. So it's a slight upgrade on the standard T5 unit, but it's about the same price from the dealer, so you might as well. Gives us a bit of flexibility for adding a bit of power, tuning the car up. Uh, the flywheel is already on, as you will have seen. So now it's time to get it all aligned. However, we have a small problem. So this is the bit from my clutch alignment tool set, which you can just about see goes fairly snugly into there. So that's the right size bit to go into the end of the crankshaft. However, it doesn't fit to the clutch. So if I assemble my clutch alignment tool with that part on, I want me to get it back out again. This is the largest one that will go through the clutch. There it goes. So I'll be able to pull that one back out. However, if I then go and slot that into there, we've got a fair old amount of play. That's not really doing a great deal of aligning. This is going to be an interesting problem. Not quite sure how I'm going to solve it yet. So it turns out the answer will actually be brute force, but we'll, we'll come to that. So now on to fitting the clutch and the pressure plate. Lots of faffing around because I want to try and get it as central as I can. Noting the clutch alignment tool is, well, rubbish. Um, so just tightening the TX40 slowly. Each time I'm going around, just checking with the clutch alignment tool and then slowly tweaking them up. Well, clutch is in, aligned, we, we think, we hope. Uh, right, less of the fanning around, time to put a gearbox in. About bloody time and all. Well, this isn't really a one-person job, but uh, I figured with enough jacks and axle stands, it's got to be doable, right? And yes, this is as tedious as it looks. So we're partway through getting the gearbox in. We need to notice a small problem. <laughs> Got a little alignment pieces here. Obviously this one has stayed in the car when the auto box came out. And this one has stayed in the gearbox when it came off the other car. So no wonder it won't bloody fit. Well, just in time to help solve that problem uh, and then to refit the gearbox, Nuff turned up. Uh, Nuff is the muscles of the operation uh, and he's uh, referred to as Nuff for a good reason, because he is a unit of measure. Whatever force or effort is required to fit, break or remove anything, you need just enough force. And by that I mean a Nuff, one single unit of Nuff. He can literally fix you know, or break anything. I definitely recommend keeping one around. Uh, generally that requires beer and coffee. We having a brew, Chief? Oh, you're right. So cheeky brew out of the way, time to get the subframe back on. So a bit like the gearbox, slowly working it up to the chassis using the jacks uh, until it's high enough that we can grab it on the bolts that hold the subframe in place and then use the bolts to tuck it up right up under the, uh, under the engine. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. And uh, do tune in for the next episode where we're going to start with the suspension and the brake rebuild and maybe get a bit parried away with some new parts. If you enjoyed the video, do please like, share and subscribe. And you can find us on all the usual social media outlets. See you soon.